Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. We actually hit a milestone since the last video. We're over 100 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough. You know, growing this channel really means a lot to me, so I really appreciate all of those who have, you know, already subscribed, all those of you that are going to subscribe. You know, at some point in the future, you're all wonderful, and I love you. Uh, we'll have a celebration video for that later where we're gonna go over all of the decks we've already done, you know, upgrade guides for, kind of rank them against each other. I think it'll be a good time. Uh, but today, we have the fourth and final upgrade guide for Lost Caverns of Ixalan featuring Blood Rites. This Vampire Kindred deck is looking to swarm the field with vampires so we can turn into demons to sack for value. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and ring that bell tap that subscribe button, all that good stuff to ensure that you never miss an episode, and maybe even earn yourself a little shout out in one of our future videos. Speaking of which, this video is dedicated to Marvel. Marvel, you rock! So as I briefly mentioned, our commander, Clavileno, first of the blessed, is a vampire cleric that lets one of our attacking vampires turn into a demon each turn. When those demons die, we're given a new demon and some card advantage. Having played the deck in an unaltered state, I could say that the protection from board wipes that this offers is just like really nice. While everyone else is scrambling to rebuild, you kind of just have a full board of 4 3 flyers ready to punch people right in the face. Of course, as with all of our upgrade guides, we're swapping out 10 cards and trying to keep things budget friendly. So let's take a look at what didn't make that cut. Bartolome del Presidio is a 2-1 vampire for 2, which lets us sack other creatures and artifacts to boost their strength. Well, we're definitely looking for sack outlets to be in the deck as a whole. The pair for this outlet isn't very strong. You know, if they had evasion in the form of flying or maybe some life planks so we could more freely use our life as a resource, I think they'd be good to go. But as they are, they have to go. Commander Sphere is on the chopping block once again. The format definitely feels like it's speeding up, even outside of CEDH, and paying 3 mana for a rock that taps for 1 just feels a little too slow. I feel like this is especially true in decks where you're only running 2 colors. Dusk Legion Zealot follows up the Sphere and is just kind of fodder. The purpose is to draw us 2 cards, 1 on ETB, Another when they attack while their commander's out on the field, the intention being that they die right away as a 1-1 attacker, or after the attack we kind of just hold them up as a blocker, right, we're looking to chump block, probably not trading. And I think it's a fine use of a low cost creature overall, but we have stronger 2 drops in the deck and we had to cut something to make room for new cards, so Zealous gotta go. Speaking of cards that just aren't good enough, we have Falcon Wrath Noble, a 2-2 flyer for 4, which has some life gain triggers when it or another creature dies. The ability isn't, like, super weak, uh, you know, something we're actually kind of looking for in the deck, right, we're, we're draining people of life, but uh, as a 2-2 body for 4 mana, it's just, it's not great, I think we could do better. Glass Cast Heart is an odd duck. It rewards us with blood tokens, which allow us to loot for, you know, a single piece of mana. Card selection is definitely powerful, but, you know, we only really have three graveyard recursion abilities in the deck. So I don't really know that I want to be dumping our creatures so quickly into the grave, and we definitely don't want to waste our other spells by just tossing them. It's also the only source of blood tokens in the deck, so burning up to 13 of them to drain each opponent for 13 really just isn't a realistic goal. Martyr of Dusk follows up the heart and is another 2 drop 2-1 two, that simply wants to attack and die for card advantage to become a 4-3 flyer. Uh, but you know, token vampires we create could be used for fodder, the rest of them shouldn't be tossed aside so easily. You know, we have better things to do that are going to have a bigger immediate impact on the game than something like the Martyr of Dusk. Illsworn Vampire is up next. And I know it seems like we really cut a ton of 2 drops, but it's still the mana value that we have the most of in the deck, so we haven't ruined our curve. Uh, but this card is a 2-2 two -two that enters tapped, and we can recast it from the grave if we gain to life this turn. Uh, honestly, they're just kind of slow. We can't use them as a blocker the turn they come out, so they gotta go. 
promise of Aklazot slash Foul Rebirth follows the oath sworn to let us sack creatures of the non-demon variety to populate. We actually want to sacrifice our newly formed demons uh, for card draws and new bodies. We create a number of different tokens in this deck, but generally speaking, we aren't you know that concerned with populating them further. Wayfarer's Bobble is here once again and is an easy cut. You know, this is especially true since our commander is as cheap as they are to cast. Land Ramp is definitely strong because it thins the deck and gets you ahead of curve to play stronger spells sooner than your opponents. But, you know, we have a number of mana rocks. We have a mana dork that lets us sack creatures to add mana. I don't think we're going to be having all that much trouble playing ahead of curve without the Wayfarer's Bobble. Last up for the cuts is Yeheni, Undying Partisan, which cares about our opponent's creatures dying and lets us sack creatures to make him indestructible. Definitely not a bad vampire by any means, but, you know, half of our removal really comes in the form of exiling, which won't trigger the ability, making them a little less consistent than we'd like. With those 10 cards out of the way, what have we put into the deck to beef it up? Vampiric Rites tops the list, letting us sack a creature at instant speed for 2 mana. Gaining a life and drawing a card in the process, this allows us to gain even more card advantage and life to spend as a resource. And if we sack the vampire demons after they've attacked, right? We had a vampire, our commanders of the field, that vampire attacks, they become a demon. We sack them using vampiric rites, we get two cards, a bit of life, and a body to replace them immediately. Of course, we can always hold them up as a blocker, you know chump block something before damage is dealt, sack them, as long as they don't have trample, we're still good to go. Vampiric Rites, Chef's Kiss. Sanguine Bond is up next and combos off well with Exquisite Blood, found in the deck by default. These two cards and a life gain trigger create an infinite loop, letting you win on the spot. I know that not everyone is a fan of infinite combos, but the game has to end at some point, and this is a way to do it. Legion Landing is a 1-drop that creates us a 1-1 life linking vampire and will eventually transform into Adanto, the first fort, which ramps us as a new land but can also just create us some more 1-1 life linking vampires. Fashion Remembrance creates us a little guy but it's really here for the second effect which will have us draining our opponents when our creatures die. With our commander out of the field, most of our creatures are actually 2 for 1 specials since they have replacement bodies when they die the first time. Moving into our creatures, we have Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, to help us further drain each opponent. They can also offer our entire board lifelink as a way to deal massive damage all at once on either attacking or blocks. Tista Karlov is up next, and while not a vampire, they are doubling our death triggers, which earn them a spot here. With 9 death triggers to double up in the deck, and the added lifelink and vigilance you know, being added to all of our tokens, she's really just a no-brainer here. Captivating Vampire follows Miss Karloff and lets us steal our opponent's creatures. They also act as a Vampire Lord to boot. With our Charismatic Conqueror and play alongside them, we're actually going to have a ton of Vampires to tap down to steal the creatures that our opponents bother to cast. Bloodwater of Aklazots is here to double the damage we deal on our turn, with us draining life from our opponents from gaining life and sacking creatures. We can cut the path to victory for ourselves in half with this Vampire Demon. Last, but not least, we have our Golden Nightmare of the deck, in the form of Grave Pact. We're keeping our opponent's boards nice and clear. When we have a creature die, each opponent is forced to sack a creature. This gets around protection, hexproof, indestructible, and more. With how often we're looking to sacrifice our own creatures, knowing that we're pretty likely to replace them upon death, this card is pure value. With the main additions done, we of course have some honorable mentions that didn't make the cut either due to the cost or simply just weren't in my top 10 for cards that wanted added to the deck, but are still strong considerations. Bloodline Keeper starts off the list as a 3-3 for 4, which you tap to create to two vampires and eventually transform into the Lord of Lineage, which acts as a powerful vampire lord that creates more vampires for us. Dribnod Carnage Dominus is another death doubling kind of guy. Uh, they're a little more expensive than Taste of the Cast, and also just to pick up. Uh, they can be made indestructible, obviously, which is like their big benefit, but I think Taste is good for now. 
Edgar Charm Groom is a vampire lord that will transform upon death into Edgar Markov's coffin, which will create vampires for us for three turns, only to return once more. Kirkwood Bats is a fantastic add to this deck since we're constantly creating tokens. Uh, we don't often sacrifice those tokens though since there's less value in sacrificing them compared to our regular creatures. If we were creating more blood tokens or better yet treasure tokens this would definitely be an instant add. But I think we already have enough ping damage and this would just be like a win more sort of thing. Maldrek Lori Dominus is here to double up token generation. Losing one creature to draw a card and create two flying demons is definitely some value town shenanigans, but they're sitting at $40, so we're gonna have to pass. Roaming Throne would double up the triggered abilities of all of our vampires, but they're also sitting at $20, bucks, so just a little too expensive with all the other cards we've added that are about like the $10 range already. We just, we don't have it in the budget. Soul Warden. It's really just a nice source of life gain for creatures ETBing, but they aren't a vampire and we aren't always draining when we gain life, so it's not as relevant here as it could be elsewhere. Vito, fanatic of Aklazots, rewards us for sacking multiple permanents per turn. We do have 8 sack outlets in the deck, but he just didn't quite crack my top 10. Uh, in terms of being budget, he's probably number 11 that I would add. Of course, we have Zulaport Cutthroat as an honorable mention. Again, right, our creatures are dying, we're sacking them, you know. Let's, let's drain that life. Idol of Oblivion rewards us with more card draw for creating all of our tokens. In a similar spot, Steph of the Storyteller has more or less the same effect, though it does cost us one white mana to do it, but we could also store up that card draw for future turns when we don't have tokens, you know, being created. But honestly, we already have just like a ton of card draw in the deck. So I really don't think we need to add these in as well. But guys, that is the upgrade guide and honorable mentions where the cards that I cut that you think should have stayed. Cards that I added that you don't think belong, let me know in the comment section down below. And consider joining our Discord to sling spells, build decks, and much more. Once again, I'd like to thank all of you that have subscribed to help the channel grow. It really means a lot to me. But until next time... Good luck with your builds.